These Pokemon books are over 40 years old, and today we're going to have a go at coding a game from one. So the one I've chosen to program from today is computer space games. The thing that I love about these books is the fact that I could have chosen any one of, let's count one, two, three, four, any one of seven different computers um, to code the same games on. I mean, I grew up with two options, Mac or PC. So the fact that in the 80s, in this book alone, there were seven different options that you can create the same games on is kind of crazy. Um, the way that it's done is all of these computers use similar um, basic language and there's a key included which you can see here which then lets you if I go to one of the programs swap out the lines of basic code so they'll be compatible with the different computers. So the computer I've chosen to program on today is the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now if you're my age or maybe American you might not recognize this but it is the best-selling British computer of the 80s. Um, one of the best-selling British computers of all time. I think it's in second now after being overtaken by Raspberry Pi. Um, but that is enough about the computer. Let's pick a game to program from this book. So we have computer space games here and if I open it up another thing I love about these books is they're not just the programs and the simple games there is quite a bit of exposition told in the form of you can see at the front the little paragraphs short stories um, for each of them as well as really cool illustrations the colors in these books all of them are just really good cool to look at I like just flicking through and just reading the exposition um, because yeah they're quite fun to read we can see the, the programs, they start off quite simple. Um, so a lot of guess the number games. There is a few guess the number games at the beginning and then get a bit more advanced. And I think at the back of here, there is one graphical game that is quite long and has like different options for the different computers rather than just using the key. Um, but if, we, if we, we're going to start simple and go back to the beginning and type in the first, first program to see what that one's like to start off with. We're going to read the uh, plot description so you can get a full idea of what the game is going to be. Um, so you are a starship captain. You have crashed your ship on a strange planet and must take off again quickly in the alien ship you have captured. The ship's computer tells you the gravity on the planet. You must guess the force required for a successful takeoff. If you guess too low, the ship will f not lift off the ground. If you guess too high, the ship's failsafe mechanism comes into operation to prevent it from being burnt up. If you are still on the planet after 10 tries, the aliens will capture you. So I'm going to start typing this in. And the one thing about the Spectrum keyboard is it was designed um, so to, I think to try and make programming easier rather than actually needing to type in the, um, th the commands yourself there, they instead put them on the key. So you just press the key and the command comes up. Um, but so for example, if I put print in here, it's there. Uh, but what actually ends up happening is you kind of spend half your time looking for the keys rather than just typing them in. I mean, I'm used to a full keyboard where I can just sort of type very quickly. Um, and instead of that, you do spend a lot of time searching for the different keys. I've kind of got used to it, so I know where they are, but especially when I'm first starting out with this, it does take a second to get used to it. And you end up doing quite a few like twister, I call it twister moves. So my pinky finger on there and pressing around to try and get the keys in the right place so you can select the ones that you want. So it is a slight battle sometimes to type on, but we get there in the end and it does get easier. Um, but you don't, you don't want to watch me type this entire program in because we've only done two lines so far. Um, so I'm going to cut and fast forward to when we have the whole program and we can actually play and test out the game. Right, so we've got that in the end. I've typed in the entire program and hopefully it is all right. I mean, the, it does, the computer does have a bit of a go at you if it thinks you've got an error in the line. I had a few different cases where it doesn't let you press enter. It has like a question mark that comes up um, if there's an error and I went back and fixed them. Um, and it has let me type the whole thing now. So hopefully if I press run, it should work and play the game. Um, so if we type run there or press run more than type run, um, click enter. We have Starship Takeoff, Gravity 9 Type in Force. Um, so it seems to be some sort of guess the number name. I think it's, from what I've pr um, typed in, it seems to be a higher or lower game. Um, so we guess the number and it tells you if you're too high and too low. So if I pick a number, let's start low and go with 10. Too low, yeah, I thought I'd be too low. So if we go up to 50, we'll see if I can actually beat it. We'll do 100. Too low again, oh my gosh, this is a really high number. The higher than I thought they'd be at, and honestly. 200, too low again, 500 maybe? Too high, okay, 300. 
it's me guessing numbers, too high again. So it's between 200 and 300. If I go 250, too low. So between 250 and 300, 250 and 300. 270, too low. 280, too low. Okay, I think I'm gonna die. I think, well, I think we get 10 goes. So I don't think we're doing very well. Let's do, no, too high, you failed, the aliens got you. That is a great end. Let me try again. Let's see if I can, get one that isn't gonna kill me. We have gravity six, type in four. So let's try, let's go a bit higher because the, the number was really high for some reason. Let's go 50, too high, okay. So the number is gonna be a lot lower than whatever it was, 200 and something. Um, try 40, this isn't too low. Okay, so it's between 40 and 50. 45, too low. It's between 45 and 50, 46, 47, 48. Yay, we got it. We had a good takeoff. So I've, I've basically tried both different options, whether it's not working or is working, and the program seems to run and the game works great. Overall, this is a great little book, especially for learning, because um, I found that each line of code has a little description at the side, which is great for kind of knowing what you're typing and the logic behind it. As well as that, they even have these little puzzles at the bottom and ways to make the program harder um, if you want to sort of adapt it as well, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and if you want to try this yourself, Osborne Books have uploaded all of these, or a lot of them, online as PDFs. You don't need to sign up, you can just download the PDFs, um, and I'll leave the link for that in the description. I hope you enjoyed this little flashback to programming in the 80s, and if you'd like to see me try one of the other games, maybe even on a different computer, then let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.